Yo, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to our channel. We're so glad you're back with us, Transit. My name is Danelle, and hey, if you haven't done this yet, you need to like, subscribe, and share this video. Don't be selfish now. We want everyone to be here for Transit. We got a fun time for you today. Hit it. series transit called step by step step by step um i don't know what that was but i'm excited because we're talking about how god can do more through us and even more than we can actually see god's using this all the time i think it's a message that you're going to benefit from big times but before we head into it i'm just going to pray Hey God, I pray that whoever's watching this on the other side of the screen, Lord, that you will talk to their hearts and their minds, Lord. They will to really um, feel your presence and hear from you. Thank you, Lord, for this time you've given us. They pray. Amen. Hey friends, my name is Candace, and I have a question for you. Now, I know you probably get asked questions all the time, every single day, but have you ever been asked this one? Where did you see God today? It's probably not a question you think about a lot. It may not even be a question you've ever thought about, but it's actually a really important one to ask. Of course, I don't mean where did you literally see God today. I don't expect you to be looking for God in human form, walking around the halls of your school or at your kitchen table during dinner or even on your Instagram feed, even though that would be pretty cool, right? What I mean by that question is where do you see evidence of God's love and peace and goodness in the world around you each day? Where did you see God today? Sometimes that question is easy to answer. It's easy to see God at work in the world around us when everything is good. But the question may be harder to answer when we experience a lot of messy, difficult stuff in life. We see this stuff in the people we live with, our friends, our groups, our communities, and on line, sometimes it feels like it's all around us. And sometimes we feel like we're the ones making life a little messier. Either way, when we see all the difficult stuff, it's much harder to see God at work. But as we all know, this is life. Sometimes life is full of really great things and sometimes it's just not. Sometimes we see God everywhere and sometimes we have no idea where God is. And when that happens, when we struggle to see God's goodness and love in our everyday lives, we usually do one of two things. We either step up or we step back. First, we can step up when we try to do something to make it better. Maybe you've done this. Maybe you and a friend started making bracelets to sell at school and around the neighborhood to help flood victims. Maybe you asked your family and friends to donate money to local shelters instead of buying you birthday gifts. Or maybe you invited a new kid to sit with you at lunch because they were always sitting alone. Maybe you started reading your Bible more to feel closer to God. Whatever it was for you, you stepped up and try to help when hard times come. Or we can step back. Maybe you struggle to know what to do. You might even think there's nothing you can do that will actually make things better in the world or in yourself. So you step back. You stop looking for what's good because it just seems too messy. Sure, you don't feel great about it, but at least you won't be disappointed when things don't really change, right? No matter how we respond, it can be easy to look at the mess and wonder, where do I see God in this? Whether you're walking through great times and feeling like there still could be more to life than this, or you're wondering what is happening and if God is there around around you, I am so glad you're here. Because what we're talking about today can really help us learn how to see God working, no matter if we can see it right now or not. If there was one guy who knew all about this faith stuff, it was the Apostle Paul. Paul became a follower of Jesus soon after Jesus died, came back to life, and went back to heaven. Paul was key in helping start the movement of Christianity in this world. Paul wrote nearly half of what we call the New Testament. That's the part of the Bible where Jesus' birth and life and everything follow happened. So most of Paul's writings were letters to groups of Christians living all over the place. That's because Paul looked out and saw all the stuff happening in the world and wanted to help other believers in Jesus 
Jesus see what their faith had to do with it all. One of Paul's letters was written to a group of Christians in an area called Galatia. We call the letters Galatians. In the fifth chapter of Galatians, Paul wrote to help new Christians know how to live for Jesus even when their circumstances were messy. He was honest about all the mess that they saw in the world around them and within them. He knew that the hatred, the jealousy, the anger, the lack of self-control, the selfishness, and the tension between the groups of people could impact them. Sound familiar? Isn't it crazy how the mess that Paul described in 50 AD is nearly a perfect match to the mess of today? Even though it's not new, the mess of this world can still be discouraging. And honestly, if the mess was all there was, us, it would feel really, really sad. If that's all we can see, life might feel a little bit hopeless. Luckily, that is not the end of the story. Not even close. Because even before Paul wrote that letter talking about some of the difficult stuff the Galatians might have seen in the world, Jesus gave us a promise that we can always hold on to, especially when we're going through a difficult time. And we find that promise documented for us by another guy by the name of John. John lived alongside Jesus and wrote down all the things he saw Jesus say and do while he was on earth. At one point, Jesus was talking to a large group of people and what he said can help us understand more about the mess we see in the world around us. He said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. It's important to know what's going on in and around any verse we read in scripture so that we can better understand the truth found in it, right? Here, Jesus describes how a shepherd is the person in charge of caring for and protecting their sheep. Now this may sound strange to us today, but back then it was a a really good example for Jesus to share with people. Because in Jesus' day, in his part of the world, shepherds were really common. So it was an example he knew his listeners would understand. Here, Jesus talks literally about thieves who would try to climb into the pen and steal a shepherd's sheep. Not cool, right? Well, Jesus used this as an example for the way evil takes from us the good things that God does in the world. Thieves want to steal just as evil wants to kill and destroy what's good. Now, I don't know about you, but that's that sounds pretty awful to me. That's why I'm so glad that Jesus says this very next part. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus came for something different, something so much better. He came so that we could live life to the full. That means all the good, amazing, awesome, incredible things that God's doing in the world are things that Jesus made a way for us to experience. He came to give us a full life. It might be easy to think that a full life is about what we have or we don't have. If we look out and see great things in the world, then life must be full. But when we don't, when we're seeing pain and suffering and struggle, then life doesn't seem all that full. But what I love about Jesus' words is that he didn't say we find a full life in our circumstances. We find it by having a relationship with him. And the more we walk with Jesus step by step, the more we'll grow into the kind of person who sees God at work in the world. Let's jump back to our friend Paul. See, after talking about all the difficult things he saw and experienced in the world, Paul wrote to the Galatians about something that could help them see more more than just the mess. Because the truth is, God is doing more than we can see. There's more than just the mess in front of us. God is working in all of it. When you believe in and follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit goes with you everywhere you go and is with you in everything that you do. And that Spirit works in us and makes us more and more like Jesus. Now, I know that might sound confusing, so let me explain it in this way. Have you ever watched a movie where the characters went to a really fancy party? Like the kind of party that has huge ice sculptures with tons of little details, like a big, beautiful swan just made out of ice? It's amazing. Do you know how the sculptor made that beautiful swan? She started with a large block of ice and an image of a swan in her mind. Then she cut away everything that wasn't the swan. That's what the Holy Spirit does in us. The Spirit takes the messy stuff Paul called out, like hatred, jealousy, anger, or selfishness, and cuts it away so that we look more like Jesus. And also, so we're able to see more of Jesus in the world. Here's how Paul described what that looks like. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. If you're wondering what exactly the fruit of the Spirit means and what fruit has to do with God, 
Let me explain. Now fruit, it grows from a tree, right? And you can tell a lot about a tree based on the fruit that it produces. We can also tell a lot about a person based on the fruit or qualities that they produce. And all this good stuff that we just read about, like love, joy, patience, peace, and kindness, all that stuff comes from God's Spirit at work in us. The Holy Spirit works in us to cut away what isn't helping us and makes room for what is good and kind and loving and more. When we look at the world with those eyes, it's easier to see God in all of it. It's easier to recognize that God is doing more than we can even see. If that sounds weird or difficult still, start by trying these two things. First, choose to believe that God is doing more than we can see. It can be really easy to see the mess and difficult parts of life, but even in those moments, we have to choose to believe that those circumstances don't change the fact that God is present and working for good in the world. Second, choose to look for God around you. The next time you're having a bad day, the next time you're struggling with a difficult circumstance, the next time life just feels really, really hard, I want you to try to change the way that you see what's in front of you. Consider even saying out loud, things in front of me feel messy, but I'm choosing to believe that God is doing more than I can see right now. Or ask, where can I see God and what I'm going through? Think about the fruit of the spirit that Paul wrote about and use that list to start. Where do you see things like joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness or self-control in yourself or your circumstances. A great place to keep this conversation going is with your groups. Now, I know this whole idea of seeing God's spirit at work around you can feel big and maybe even confusing, but your group is a great place where you can talk about these kind of big ideas about faith and figuring it all out. Your group can even be a place where you see God working in you and in each other too. And when you see these qualities in yourself and the people around you, it will remind you that God is doing more than we can see. Wow, what an amazing message um, and a challenging message at the same time. I'm excited for us to walk away from this and to chat more. And hey, if you're someone who has questions or want to know more about God's plan for us and how he's using us, uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram and send us a DM. Uh, we'll love to actually have a conversation with you. Uh, but hey, just a few things before you guys tune out of this video is one, we are in our varsity boot camp. So if you haven't yet, uh, been a part of our challenges, it's not too late. We're dropping videos every single Wednesday at 1 p.m. So make sure you tune in, be a part of the challenge, submit it so you can be a part of winning either a duffel bag, spike ball, or a transit jersey. I'm telling you, these prizes are no joke. And also, if you haven't yet um, signed up for our event, make sure you head over to connectionshirts.com slash transit. Tell you come paintballing or come mini potting. It's gonna be a good time overall. The summer is not done and we have a lot of stuff planned. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to share with a friend. Peace out.